We just said we wanna we wanna make this move. We all we've all had long days, especially you. Every day is a long day. <laughs> Boy, Florida, what an education! I just had to hire a botanist today in Florida. Oh yeah. To redo all the stuff that the state. So first, the county gives you. You don't file like here in Florida. You pay the county. And they come back with a report. So they'll have guys like you do a whole report, tell you about the land. Mm -hmm. Then you have to hire a botanist to recertify. I don't know. What a process. What a. Yeah, but they're easier on filling the wetlands, though. <laughs> they, have, world, they have they? wetland banking. Isn't Florida all wetland? Just about. That's, yeah. that's the reason why. Yeah, I know. Is, like, wherever you go, there's swamp. Bottles. But they're so, getting better. So, like in the Keys, I bought a double lot. Yeah. So well, I, the Keys are a different <laughs> animal completely, right. though. Because you're on the allocations, the building permits right now, and you have to go into Rogo after you get your building permit approved, and it's all about scores, which is based on sewer water, no wetlands, no mangroves. Recording in no progress. Risks, anything conservation lowers your score, right? Um, which makes it harder to develop the lot. Right. Ready? Ready? The stream is a little wonky, but the zoom's off. Oh, no, Tim. All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the August 17, 2022 meeting. Uh, it is 6.30. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This meeting will be held in person at the town hall. Persons may attend and participate in the hearing by using the online Zoom application at HTTPS zoom.us slash join or by phone at 1929-205-6099 using the meeting ID 839-7440-0947 and the password is 989-484. Uh, 6.30, the first thing up is a new request for a determination, 33 Wynwood Road, and I have to read this one in. And I have to pause. Is this, do I have to read... This other hybrid, because there's two different readings here. Do I have to I read this know one? No, you should have read that one. But I mean, pursuant to Governor Baker's fifth, February 15, 2022 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of the Sutton Conservation Commission is in a hybrid format with both in person and Zoom components. To join the meeting, visit zoom.us slash join and enter meeting ID 839 7440 0947 and passcode 989484. This meeting will be broadcast and recorded on local public access station 30, Verizon 31 and Charter Spectrum 191 and live streamed on the town's YouTube channel when available. A recording of the meeting will be made available after proceedings on the town's website and YouTube channel. First thing up, in accordance with the provisions, provisions of MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act and Sutton Bylaw 12 Wetlands Protection, the Conservation Commission Commission will hold a hearing to review a request for determination RDA submitted by John Maynard of South Mass. The hearing will be held on Wednesday, August 17, 2022 at 6 30 p.m. The project consists of removal of a dead tree at 33 Wynwood Road. Do we have anyone here for that? Come on up, sir, to the microphone. Please. Yep. Okay. Are you John Maynard? I am, yes. Of um, Southboro, right? Actually, I'm of Manhattan, New York. My uh, nephew who owns the property with me is Southboro. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. And just a, is this just one tree, Brandon and Greg? Yep, one hemlock tree um, that is 30 feet from uh, the lake. And we have a letter that said it's dead? Yeah, RW Emmett. Yeah. One of the best in the business. Mm -hmm. um, the only question is whether or not you would uh, require a replacement tree. That's your call. 120 foot hemlock. Just and it's it's dead, so it definitely needs to come down. To the board. Any comments? 25. Do we have? There was a picture of it, right? The yeah. Oh, I took some as well, so I can yeah, well. show you what it looks like. How many feet from the water is it? 30? 30 feet. 30 feet. And it's in a wooded area. So it's this one in the background here. I have some more pictures. It's kind of hard to get a, this This is probably the best picture. That one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right here. Um, water's to your right, right here. There's a recreation. I'm kind of standing in a recreational area. And then you have the road to your left coming up this side. 
um, probably 20 feet away from the road and the recreation area. Pretty wooded area already, right? Yeah. I can't help myself, I have to say it. I understand. Dead trees are good trees, right? Right. And being that close to the lake, I, I look at that tree and I say, that is a prime bald eagle tree. But I'll leave it at that. It is, but it's a safety. It's issue. lived its life, it's dead. Yeah. Where is it in proximity to dwellings? 30 feet. It's, it's the only bank in the area, so it's 30 feet from the bank of Singletary. No, but from the house and the... Oh, I the, think you said well. The, Sorry. Um, okay. House, I would say 60 feet. Yeah, 50, 50, 50, 60. 60 feet. But he's in a would recreational you? area. There's there people in, yeah. yeah. And the chairman is an insurance. Agent. You know my feeling. <laughs> so this is kind of that recreation oh, area. Yeah. This is an umbrella. And again, the tree behind it. It, to me, it makes room for all those other trees to flourish and, and take and off, fill right? in, and yeah, I don't have putting trees in woods. Yeah, I don't either. I, either. I need a motion. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second it. Call made a motion to close the public hearing. Mike seconded. And Nicole, do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I, Bill, vote aye. And I'll make a motion to issue a negative determination for 33 Winwood. Can go ahead and remove the tree. I'll second it. Nicole made a motion. Mike seconded to remove the tree. Nicole, how do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I, Bill, vote aye. Sir, you're all set. You can take the tree down. Okay. Thank you for coming do, in. Do I need any paperwork uh, to take the JM in? One. Uh, eventually, you'll be getting your, your paperwork a little later this week. Oh, fine. Uh, may I ask that it be sent by email because I, I'm a summer resident, so I don't have a postal address. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind. Okay. Uh, if you need an original, yeah, you can good. always pick it up here at Town Hall. Yeah, okay, I can do but that. But we too. can definitely yeah. email it to you, if no you problem. Email it, I'll know it's here. I'll probably yes, come by and pick it up. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you You're all. You're good to go. Have a great night. Thank you. 635. Um, another new one. In accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, and the Sutton Bylaw 12, Wetlands Protection, the Conservation Commission will hold a hearing to review a requested determination. RDA submitted by Dolores Zelnick of Bilbury, Mass. The hearing will be held on Wednesday, August 17, 2022 at 6.35 p.m. The project consists of replacing existing field septic system within the buffer zone at 18 Coat Lane. Welcome. Hi. Good evening. My name is Rauf Mankaris with Alpha Omega Engineering. Uh, just proposing to replace a field uh, septic system uh, cesspool, actually, uh, outside the 50-foot buffer. Uh, all the work is outside the buffer zone, the 50 foot buffer, nothing in. Uh, we have a retaining wall. Uh, basically, we're just looking to do an RDA uh, to replace the system. The new system will confirm with the new Title V, except a couple waivers we're requesting, and we already Started got the again. approval for conservation from the Board of Health. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, Greg's trying to bring it up. The, uh, the cloud is giving us issues. Well, let's do I have some pictures I can show the board on the site. I have a hard copy if this helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's the trailer. Um, the septic system would go to the left in the picture. That shed, shed would be removed, and um, the walkway leading up to the front door would be replaced. That's, pro that's pretty that's much all. the scope yeah. of yeah, the work. That's all. Yeah, um, just if you want to see some more pictures. So, like I said, the septic is coming in somewhere right in this area. And right when this pan stops loading, I can show it. There we go. Uh, Raul, do I see an outdoor shower there? I'm so, uh, that's a shed. On the left-hand side, but the white on the right-hand side. That's... Is that I, an outdoor shower? I don't think so, but it, it would be gone anyway. Okay. Because it's not shown on the plan. No, it's just shown as a stairs landing. Uh, right, but there was, there was a little. There was a little. Uh, no, I I don't think so. Just maybe like a, a fence or something. I didn't. See, I look inside, but it's okay. So you have the bank to the yes no, uh, northeast up here. Yep. And then um, just a grass area. The whole lot is grass. And then you have the trailer here, septic coming in, the fifty foot. Buffer. line comes in right here um one question ralph this will That's be completely out of blsf yes i mean the the one you were looking at was the flood zone 
line. Okay. The 50 foot is a little bit at the front of the house. Um, so, outside of BLSF, are reporting land subject to flooding and outside of the 50, 50 foot, foot buffer. So therefore, an NOI is not required. Um, the erosion and sediment controls completely envelope the work from the side of the trailer on each side, coming around the, by the property line and then back up over here. Um, so that's pretty much, pretty much what's going on here. Great. Thank you. To the board. I don't have anything. Pretty straightforward. Look. To the public. Anybody at home? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for 18 Cole Lane. I'll second it. Cole made a motion to close the public hearing. Mike seconded the quality vote. Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I bill vote aye. I'll make a motion to issue a negative determination for 18 Cody Lane. I'll second it. And Nicole made a motion for a negative determination. Mike seconded the quality vote. Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I bill vote aye. Thank you for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. And I might be able to make things a little easier as I confer with Pam as well, but given that there's, there, there are no commission members uh, remotely and everybody's in the same room, I don't think you have to do roll call. I, d I would disagree with that. You disagree with So keep doing roll okay. call? Okay. Okay. Easy enough. We're a small group. <laughs> it's a technicality. Brandon, I can tell you that. Okay. I want to show the other town I work for the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, next up, another new one. In accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act and the Sutton Bylaw 12, Wetlands Protection, the Conservation Commission will hold a hearing to review abbreviated notice of resource area delineation and RAD submitted by Deborah Kaczynski, Sutton Mass. The hearing will be held on Wednesday, August 17, 2022, at 6 40 p.m. The project consists of an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation at 236 Central Turnpike. Welcome back. Thank you. Raouf Makaris with Alpha Omega Engineering. We have Bob Murphy. He flagged the wetland for the site. And uh, the plan you have is to scale, showing all the wetland flags on the property. And we're just open for any questions. Is there a DEP number on this one yet? Uh, no. No. Oh, okay. Just didn't know if it came in today. So, Mr. Chairman, this is the site. Um, you have a field to the northeast. And then you have a wooded area to the southwest. Um, the wetlands, as I'll show you on the site plan in just a second, there's pretty much a wetland that comes through right here, and then there's a wetland cutoff that comes through just about right here. Um, this is all hayfield, it appears, um, all upland area. I agree with the wetland delineation um, on the property. Just some notes on the property in this area has been historically disturbed. Um, there's a 1990s aerial that shows a house by the road right here. There's some foundations in the back this way. Um, so that's just kind of some background. It's covered in invasive species. But I, like I said, I agree with the delineation and I agree that there was no undelineated resource areas on the property. Perfect. Thank you. To the board, have any questions? Just to thank these guys. So what's going on is subdividing up all the land so they're coming to us before they make all the property lines to so that we get a chance to. So no. thanks for coming in. Yo. Thank you. And for the, I don't have any questions. And for what that means is, is they cannot create the property lines prior to doing this and then create a hardship for themselves and try to get a lot that's not essentially buildable. So you're doing it the right way. And thank you. Um, before I turn to the public, does the board have any questions? To the public, does anyone from the public have any questions? If you could come on up and state your name and address. Uh, and I have one more quick thing. Yes, Bryn. So I was talking, conferring with Greg earlier today. Can you bring up the plan? Yeah. So if you, if you let him bring up the plan. And just to let the, everyone know, we can't close on this tonight anyway because there's no DP number, so this will have to be continued, unfortunately. We have to have a DEP number. Okay, so, so yeah. Greg, t um, Tell the commission what you're telling me today about that area on the left-hand side would be the west side of that, that wetland line right there. Um, just that there's potential upland islands in here. Um, 
you know, I don't know the exact locations, but it looked like just walking down the street that there was some areas that could be considered upland. Um, so with this ANRAD, through the life of this ANRAD, that would be considered BBW unless you want to call those areas out. Yeah, we took a look and saw there was some isolated upland areas in there, but to be honest with you, in order to get access to them and everything would would be a, a problem. Yeah. So uh, in order to avoid filling the plane up with a lot of unnecessary flags, we just looked at the basic areas relative to construction of the site and de determined that the line we had would be pretty much used for setback requirements. Right. So, so what I like to do, Mr. Chairman, with the Commission's permission is in the ORAD state that the, the, the applicant has put down that line and there's a presumption that everything to the west of that, uh, you know, for now, is considered BVW, but I'll make a note in there that there are some isolated, you know, upland areas in there in case there's ever a question down the line about it. And it would also document it all when they come in to do filings for any future lots. Yes. Now the floor is yours. Okay. Um, I just have to Would one of you gentlemen mind giving up your seat for her? Yeah, you want to sit down? Oh, you can. No, take my seat. Oh, yeah. He's a younger guy. Yeah. <laughs> if I could just throw in a little bit on the ORAD sure. idea. Um, when, when I first was asked to flag this, it was involving a project that the town was going to do, a DPW was going to pick up the property and use it as a, you know, town land function. If that's, what, that's, what, that's what I was told. Anyway, so the idea was what land would be useful on a large scale not a small scale. Uh, the way where you're not going to close the meeting where you don't have a number, I would like to go back and address the, the part of the property way over to the left just to make sure that I want to make sure we don't have any contiguous land that meets the zoning requirement. In other words, you can have a lot of smaller pieces, but if they're not contiguous, you can't use them anyway. So I would be looking at, you'd be looking at basically 48,000 square feet. I, I don't think you have it, but I would want to, and Greg agrees, but I would, prior to the next hearing, I would address that. Perfect. Well, let's say this. If you go 50 front, 50 rear, it's 30 at the end, because set setbacks no, are 50 it's, rear, 50 front. It's 80. It's 30, and so it's 80? Yeah, but you need 100. You need more than 100 just to build yeah, no, because you're 50 in the front, 50 right. in the rear. So you have to go 100 feet and then fit a house. I just... I think it's 50-20. Well, it's it's, 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 it's not going to happen, but I, like I say, I'd like to just address it to make sure that I represent my client properly. Like I say, I think this is a different client than original, originally. Okay. But it's you don't have contiguous parcel to meet zone. I'm pretty sure of that. And just your name and address for everybody at home. Yep. My name is Joan Siska, and I live at 33 Burnap Road, which is right across the street from this hill. Um, we've been having some issues with drainage and our foundations kicking out. This year we didn't have any problems because there's been no rain, but in the past. So I went to the down to the highway department. They put up a brim divert the water but I couldn't even get out of my house as I'm getting older our driveway is like an ice skating rink so I'm just here to make sure that drainage doesn't flow onto our property we can um, agree to that and make sure and actually the bylaw states both through planning and us that water cannot drain into the roadway right so May I through the yeah, chair? yeah, please. You, you <coughs> better explain. Hi. I'm Mike. Um, so the three lots that face your road aren't in our jurisdiction, and there's no stormwater management in this town. So good practices, probably. They're just residential lots. I don't think there's any commercial development that I know of. It'll probably be just a few houses. 
and I think they'll be set in the field, and I believe it's all gravel down there. So I think the chances of water leaving that property are going to be pretty slim to none because of the material on the site. And I would imagine with the 50-foot setback, the house is going to be a good ways off the road. So I guess we just have to hope for good development. But I don't believe any water is going to make it out into the street. You know, it's not typical practice to direct the water out into the road. Well, I know with the um, Pleasant Valley, when the townhouses came in, and the amount of traffic in the trucks. Once again, that was more of a commercial project, roads being built. I mean, these are just a few residential house lots. I mean, no one likes to see land developed, but. Oh, I don't mind seeing land developed. I just think it'll be very minimal impact. Like, I wouldn't want you to think that residential development of that field is not really gonna have an impact. I don't think anything would change for you. You know, like the water flow or what you've already seen must be an existing problem. Um, so it's more of a street issue, it sounds like, than it is the land across the street. Because the land, the road is the hard surface. I think you're on a private way down there, right? That roadway? No. Is that a town road? It's a is town there drainage road. and everything? Does it have drainage? Like manholes? And no, she's, no. On, she's on the... Burnout. Burnout. Right. That's a main Burnout drag. goes to Pleasant Valley. Right, right. No, I know. That's but a okay. public I road. It, I think more if she has water issues, it's the street. than it would be across the street. But if any of the lots come into, so this is just de determining what the wetlands are, and then any lots right, but that if are. If you go back to the plan, she's talking about the lots that face Burnap Road that are 1,200 feet from the edge of wetland, maybe even further. So none of that's in our jurisdiction. So I just don't want her to think that we'll be able to have any say on the development of most of that land. Agreed. Yeah, down yeah. here, but she's. Those lots will be, they won't file with us. Well, I can't, I mean, I just. We just delineated the wetland. I mean, I don't think three of the houses are going to be in our jurisdiction. I don't think any of them will be because they'll stay 100 feet away, I would think, on land this big. Maybe one of the far left lots when they get closer to the wetland, but I would I would guess, like on Menden Road, everybody stayed, because that's the goal by our bylaw, is to stay outside the resource area and on these big lots that have to prove a reason why they're in our jurisdiction, right? So I would think maybe one of these lots is going to be in front of us but I bet the other three or four it usually happens with zoning like how can you configure the lots can we squeeze another lot in is the lot gonna require a house within a hundred feet well, well let's try it see what the concom says it's usually like how I said it goes. we may see one in front of us right um, but I just wouldn't want her to have a false sense of thinking that something's going to happen that's going to assure her to be all set to be to stay dry because it's, right. out, of our it's out of our jurisdiction I just if we could be helpful, where would any issues, would that go to planning DPW, board? DPW, because I think it's the street more than it is the land, and it's an ongoing issue with water. Yeah. And I know that I don't believe building's going to let them direct all the water from the home out into the street. Well, that's what I was getting at, that you right. can't just dump water from any house lot into the street. You'd have to keep it as best you can on the property because we don't want anyone else to get wet. Is the street the issue? It is. <clears throat> and with all the traffic and all the water of overflowing, we have, um, we've had a lot of erosion. You can't see it right now because we got plants. But in the fall, you'll see it. And we haven't had rain, so. Have you reached out to the DPW or? Building? I did. They put a brim up. They came down to my house and put a brim. On the left side, the uh, water goes in by the well, and on the right-hand side, it goes in off the street onto our property, too. So they had a, you know, they did it quick. So that was good. But I'm just up here to make sure I don't get any more water. Well, you don't want that to happen. No. It's not going to happen this week, anyway, with the lack of rain, but. Uh, or this year. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? on 236 Central Turnpike. So I'm gonna make a motion to continue to September 7th. We're gonna do the lots. Because we need a DEP number. Did you at go to Zoom? At Is there anyone at Zoom or at home for this? Are you gonna go to the Nope. Yeah. Just a, a question. So an INRAD, yep. and they're getting a determination on just to agree on the wetland line. And that's a full DEP filing with a DEP number and everything? Yes, it is. So what, full. that'll go? I'm just curious. I just 
Yeah, we absolutely. We don't do it that often. Yes. So that's what creates the record that we agreed on a, on a wetland line. Yep. And that's why the language for the left side where we haven't really delineated a line. We're just assuming, other than some isolated wetlands, that there could right. be, or I guess for this purpose, that's a wetland. Until but for the purposes of this this ANRAD, the way the way it's it's drawn, you have to make a presumption that everything on the left side of that wetland line is BBW un, until such a time that they come back with a new line. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. But but I what I want what I like to do is just make a note that we did indeed find some upland area in there in case it ever becomes an issue in the future because it could be ten years from now. And then somebody looks back at this old old uh, order and say, "Oh no, no! See, back then they said that was all wetland. How are you coming back today to say that's upland?" Because oh, yeah, good right. idea. So, so right. I like so to put a little. To, yes. I like to put a footnote in the order today, so that situation doesn't happen years down the line. And that's in the best interest of the owner. I think that Mr. Murphy said he was going to identify some of those upland areas. Yes, yeah, right? so we so. did. Yeah, so. Yeah. Well, so I want to look and see if it's contiguous enough to make a. A lot. Yeah. So we'll find out next meeting. <laughs> All right. I'll make a motion to continue um, 236 Central Turnpike to September 7th at 6.35 p.m. I'll second it. Motion to continue to 9-7 and Mike seconded. Nicole, do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I, Bill, vote aye. Next up, 645 is now 658. 345 West Sutton Road. This is a continuation, so we can make a motion to waive the reading. I'll make a motion to waive the reading of 345 West Sutton Road. I'll second it. I'll make a motion to waive the reading. Mike seconded an equality vote. Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. Aye, Bill, vote aye. Welcome back again. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> uh, we now have a DEP file number for this project. Uh, I took a look at the comments that came in on the DEP comment section. And basically, they were asking for similar information as the board relative to the existing tree line and the proposed tree line. Essentially, the lot is a wood lot. There's a trail that goes down the center, but it's the tree line pretty much as you see it. It follows West Sutton Road uh, pretty much along the right of way line. It's um, wooded with the majority of deciduous upland trees. Uh, at the request of the commission, we located all of the trees in the buffer zone and um, quite a few in the 50-foot area that are shown, just to give you an idea of what the trees are there, but we're, we're not proposing to take them down. So there's a note on the upper right. This, basically what we have is 20 trees that are larger than five inches. Uh, majority of them are black birch, hardwood. A couple of beech trees, a couple of ash. The ash trees are in tough shape. Uh, the oak trees, there's, there's a couple of 24 inch oak trees that are to be removed behind the house. And they're in what I would consider poor shape due to carpenter ant infestations the um, anyway there's 20 trees there shown to be removed so so during the the last hearing we, we kind of came up with the idea that there's really two areas of disturbance there's a permanent area of disturbance where the trees will be removed the brush everything will be removed regraded for the septic system and the house. So there's a dashed line running along the top of the slope, which essentially differentiates between permanent and temporary disturbance. So the temporary disturbance area, we're really not changing the grade a lot along the edges. So there's quite a few trees in, in the range of 15 to 20 inch trees along that area that we previously were on the previous plan they would have been removed what we've done is to regrade the slopes we tightened up the septic system slopes to the minimum requirement three to one slopes and 
what, what that allowed us to do is to reduce the amount of fill significantly around the perimeter. So that being said, we now show the, the temporary disturbance area with trees, oak trees, there's a list of um, trees in there, white pine, and uh, quite a few shrubs. The shrubs are all native, uh, witch hazel, blueberries, uh, ilex, ilex uh, verticillata, uh, winter, winterberry holly. Uh, these are all native species that do well in buffer zone areas. And those areas will not be mowed. What we did was we put your limit of disturbance uh, signs basically along the top of the slope. Uh, so what you have is you'll have an area that's graded to meet Title V, uh, but it will not be mowed. It will be allowed to go back to its natural state. And the shrubs that we're putting in there are more or less to jumpstart the native species. But what's going to happen over a period of three or four years, the native species are going to more or less come in on their own. And you'll, you'll have a lot of, well, there'll be red maples, black birch, they'll be the first to come in as shrubs and then they'll go up to the tree layer. Uh, but the blueberries and witch hazel, they'll do well in the secondary horizon. Uh, the, there was some question about the garage. So th th we decided to, um, the garage was not in the buffer zone. So we just, we just took it out because it's not proposed. And um, that's, that will now be a a gravel parking area beside the house. Uh, we, we brought in a stone retaining wall and what that allowed us to do was over on the right and again it was outside the buffer zone but it allowed us to reduce the amount of fill uh, significantly on the on the right side of the house uh, and for that reason we are proposing to um, leave that as a wooded area and it'll provide a buffer between the two houses. As I say, there's the, uh, the house next door doesn't really have much vegetation other than a lawn. So we're gonna leave the trees and everything on that side. Uh, but the, the, the basic idea here is that what we've done is to significantly reduce the amount of fill and um, provide a landscape plan with plantings. Uh, another note I wanted to make, there was a question uh, arose in the last meeting about possibly looking at moving the house closer to the street uh, with a, a zoning variance, that type of thing. This site, it doesn't really work because if you look at the site, the site goes uphill as you, as you approach the street. So if you were to move the house forward toward the street, you'd also have to go up because the septic system follows the groundwater and that and the cellar of the house follows the groundwater so you'd have to raise everything so if you if you say you went 10 feet forward on a three to one slope you'd have to raise the site three and a third feet so you're not gaining any if the site were flat you could say move it forward but this site goes uphill toward the road so you really don't gain anything by um, reducing a front yard setback you'd have to fill just as much as you have whether the house is where it is or not um, but that being said, I'll um, give it back to the chair and answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Uh, Brandon, Greg, have you had a chance to review this? Yep. Um, just to start, DP file number got back to us, 0 303-0971. Um, and this will be a little repetitive of what Bob just said, but basically they asked for existing and proposed tree lines. Obviously, we have that here now with the, the roadway tree line and then the temporary and permanent areas of uh, disturbance. He also adds some notes onto the plan, um, outlining exactly what the um, area of temporary and permanent disturbance is. And I'm just gonna tell you guys those because I think it actually got cut off in the top right corner there. Permanent disturbance is 5,100 square feet inside the AURA. Temporary disturbance is 1,825 square feet inside the AURA. Um, which adds up to 16 or 6,925 square feet inside of the AURA. Um, as Bob said, 20 trees, five inch caliper or larger are to be removed inside of the AURA. Um, 
So going back into the planting plan, he has four red oaks, five white pine, white pines, eight mountain laurels, three winter berries, and five high bush blueberries, all native, um, non-invasive species. Um, so I guess at this point, the question is, is the commission more comfortable with this plan? Um, and actually I had a question for Bob. With the planting area turning into kind of an edge habitat, are you worried about invasives moving into the newly disturbed area um, and maybe choking out? And maybe would an invasive control plan be good for that area if that, anything like that happened? Well, the interesting thing about this area is there's very little invasive species there now. It's, it's always nice to do a wetland project in an area that doesn't have invasive species because they're just hard to get through. They, they tend to be thick and full of thorns. In this case here, I don't, I don't really see that happening. However, you always need to be prepared on a new planting area that the birds are going to be bringing in the seeds from invasive plants. So if, if, as part of a landscaping program, uh, for instance, the bittersweet vines, you know, they get to be a foot tall or so. They're very easy to pull up. You know, when they get to be 50 feet tall, they're a little hard. But I would just, just consider a, a normal landscape program would keep the invasives out. But again, uh, we really don't have any invasive species on this property. It's, it's quite remarkable. Thank you. To the board. Any questions? At the last meeting, we had talked about pushing the house to the right, uh, potentially to avoid additional impact. And I don't recall what how you responded to that if you well the mind. idea is we wanted to keep the house more or less central with the septic system and the and the knoll in that area and also provide a buffer between the two houses you have the side yard setbacks front yard setbacks that type of thing um, but we, we feel that by pretty much removing any work uh, as far as buildings and disturbance, permanent disturbance, that's all outside the 50-foot zone. So again, based upon the, the topography, the topography of the site, the way it works, the house is at a high point more or less in the center. And the drainage goes off to either side, so drainage-wise it works, it works better to you know, have the house right where it is. Again, the, in, the intention is to, at a later date, when he has more money, bring in, put in a garage on the right-hand side. Uh, that will require work. But again, all of that area that you're talking about, th that whole portion of the house, the garage, the retaining wall, that's all outside the buffer zone. So we don't anticipate having to come back to you with a garage later on. But it is, it's a future plan. Anybody else from the board? Anyone from the public? Anyone on Zoom? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for 345 West 2nd Road. I'll second it. Nicole made a motion to close the public hearing. Mike seconded Nicole, do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I, Bill, vote aye. Make a motion to issue an order of conditions for 345 West Sutton Road. I'll second it. Call made a motion to issue an order. Mike seconded and a call to vote. Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I, Bill, vote aye. Thank you. you Thank you very much for your time. Have a great night. That's why we got the DP number. Yes, so am I. 650, now 710. It's a, another continued public hearing for 3 Lackey Dam Road. If we can have a motion to waive the reading. I'll make, make a motion to waive the reading for 3 Lackey Dam Road. I'll second it. Cole made a motion to waive the reading for 3 Lackey Dam Road, and Mike seconded and Nicole, how do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I, Bill, vote aye. Welcome back. What's your name? Oh, Andrew Gordon. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Dan Feeney from Bales and Thomas, uh, civil engineer for the project. Also here is Andrew Gorman, um, a wetland scientist at Bales and Thomas. 
as well as um, Todd Bador uh, from Fletcher Tilton and Leo Layton from USMA uh, on behalf of the applicant. Um, so uh, we were last in front of the commission uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we had at that point had updated the original plan and had pulled work out of the uh, zero to 25 foot or area. Um, and at the August 3rd hearing had, had received the feedback um, to um, remove work um, up to, you know, out of the 50 foot or area. Um, so we worked on a revised plan, and, and the plan that's shown up here right now um, is an overlay. Um, so the orange-ish color in the background um, was the, um, the original revised plan, so that had work in the 25-foot aura. Um, so we, we just put this exhibit together just to kind of show the shift um, of what we did to, to pull everything, um, with one minor exception, out of the 50-foot uh, aura area. Um, so the building got twisted um, a little bit, pulled a little bit further to the north, um, was reduced in size. Uh, the building went down from, I believe, about 190,000 square feet down to about 179,000 square feet. Um, the employee parking lot was shortened on the northern end, and the tractor-trailer parking lot was um, reduced um, because the building came up a little bit further to the north. Um, so the net result is, is that the proposed work um, associated with the building um, and the parking areas are outside the 50-foot aura area now. Um, the outlet from the northern detention basin, um, there's about 300 square feet of aura disturbance within the 25-foot to 50-foot. Um, I think we've explained in the past that has to do um, with being able to discharge um, the stormwater at the appropriate elevation um, based on the site grades and where the basin elevations are located. We need to come um, into that 50-foot aura area um, with the outlet from the pipe and then a little bit further beyond that uh, for riprap to, to dissipate the, the velocities of the flows coming out in that area. So um, a minor disturbance up in there within the 50-foot aura area. Um, so uh, at the last hearing, it was you know discussed that, that to have a little bit of back and forth, um, both with um, Greg as well as with any commission members who can provide input. So we did provide the plan last week, um, and we're able to meet out at the site um, with Greg and Mr. Marin from the commission, um, and just basically walk um, the areas again, um, as well as um, discuss. Um, the, the impacts and just kind of give an overview of that. So, so that communication did happen um, yesterday. Um, we did um, also um, on Monday of this week uh, survey the location of trees uh, out at the site um, within the disturbed area within the aura. Um, and we also um, have updated the mitigation plan uh, that we had previously presented. So there's a couple different forms of mitigation that we're proposing. The first is the removal of some invasive species. Um, so there was an initial um, proposal for that, and, and we we're proposing to add additional um, invasive species removal. And Andrew will talk about that in a little bit. But we also um, updated the area where we would proposed to protect the land through, um, you know, a conservation restriction or an, or, or an open space de deed. Um, so we did that. Um, originally, we had it, um, I believe it was about 18 acres or so um, that we were showing. Um, and during the site visit, it was just asked if that could be increased to basically um, come up near the edge of the, the proposed limit of work and so that the rest of the land um, would be placed in that conservation restriction to protect the land. So um, it, the green on the plan, there's two separate areas because there's an area to the, um, to the southwest of the development and then an area to the northeast. And the two areas now would total approximately 22 acres. Um, the, the additional areas are along Lackey Dam Road. Um, I think we had previously no noted that that was um, a, um, it, it was 
reasonably pr protected under the planning board regulations because we abut a um, residentially zoned district. So there's a there's a buffer that you have to leave in its natural state along there. Um, but you know there's there's no problem with including that within the CR land. And then on the western side of the site, just extending what we had previously up to um, Oakhurst Road. There's a you know there was a triangular piece um, and then a, a more linear piece all the way up to Oakhurst. So that, that's where the additional um, CR land would come come into play. So um, currently um, under this revised plan, we would have about one and a half acres of disturbance within that 50 to 100 foot aura area. Um, and so the, the CR would, would be approximately 22 acres um, of the, it's about approximately 40 acres of total land uh, that's in Sutton. Um, as part of the project site. So, um, and, and you know, we, we provided on the plan a breakdown between uh, BVW area, Aura area, and Upland area. Um, so there would be significant Upland area on the site that would be included within that um, conservation restriction land area. Perfect, thank you. To Brandon and Greg was out at the site. You have an overview as well? Yep, um, to speak to the conservation restriction before I go into anything else, I guess. Um, like Dan was saying, some of these areas can't be used. You have this linear area here. There's not much they could do there because of the zoning setbacks. Obviously, wetlands you can't use um, without coming to us first. And then this area would be almost impossible to get to unless some they purchase this land. Um, but the, I think the important areas in this CR proposal are, is this upland? Oh, you can't. Yeah. It's an island here. here. Yep. Um, that upland area. The area off of Oakhurst Road um, to the west of the wetlands and the area to the southwest of the building. Um, work could be expanded into those areas. So I think having the CR is beneficial in that it, it restricts that. Um, to go more into the new plan, they removed everything from the 50-foot AURA except for that stormwater outfall. And Dan, I know you walked us through why the outfall has to be there, but could you just do that one more time for me? Sure, so um, the site grades as you, so, so Lackey Dam Road is at a fairly significant lower elevation than the grades on the site. So when you walk into the property off of Lackey Dam Road, you're going uphill. Um, and conversely, when you come off of Oakhurst, uh, you would be going downhill. Um, so, um, we have to come up in elevation as much as we can in order to get the drainage from the property to work. So we're, we're trying to approximate existing conditions with a proposed stormwater design. So we have to take the same basic flow patterns that go to, to the uh, northeast wetland, keep that similar as well as to the, to the southwest basin. Um, so we're coming up as much as we can off of um, Lackey Dam Road, having as much of a slope on the driveway as we can have, and then getting up to, a, to an elevation of about 356 for the building elevation, um, which makes the you know, grade around the building a little bit lower. So the basin then is set, um, the bottom of the basin is at 346 and a half, again, because you're gonna have catch basins um, that have cover over the pipe and then have to run a certain distance with a minimum slope in the pipe to convey the flow to the basin. So you're working with a, with a bottom elevation of 346 and a half. So in order to have positive drainage coming out of the basin, the outlet from the pipe that, that ends up coming out of the basin has to be at a lower elevation than 346 and a half. And so if you look at the contours up in that area of the site, you the, the only way to get below, say, three, the, the 346 contour is to be in the 50-foot aura. If you're outside of that, you're going to be at a higher elevation, so your pipe would be submerged or you, you, know, you could dig a pit in the, in the ground, but the water wouldn't then be able to have positive drainage down to the wetland. So that's, that's why we had to just extend that pipe enough to daylight it. Um, and so the, the end of the pipe is in 25 feet um, from, the, from the BVW. It's set back 35 or so feet, but then you need a little bit of riprap in that area because, again, you're going to have flows coming out, and you just want it to, to, to take the velocity off the pipe so you don't get erosion, cause erosion going down into the BBW. Thank you. I guess my next question would be, you said you GPSed the amount of 5-inch cover trees. 
Yeah. Um, do you have the number f for the amount yep. of trees? So we are, we are working to finalize all that information and provide the commission with a more polished document. Right now we have about 305, um, and they're shown in green on this plan here. So this is the drainage structure that Dan was just talking about, and we have some maples and pines in the aura here. So we're going to be, as part of our revised plan set, um, probably using a darker line type that are, is more visible, but we'll have these all on the plan set along with the species name and the diameter at breast height. But we can give the commission a sneak preview of the numbers that we're looking at. Um, see my screen has changed. Um, so white pine, red oak, and red maple have the commanding lead of the forested portions of the aura that we're looking to work within. So um, out of the 305 that we're currently looking at, um, this is generally the percent breakdown of the species therein. Okay. It seems like a pretty typical di distribution for this forest type. So now we're at the point where they're looking to know if they should move forward with more design plans on this broad kind of general um, overview of the site. So I'm going to ask the commission the same blurb I've been asking you guys over the last few meetings, which is the bylaw requires that applicants makes all efforts to avoid impacts to well and areas, including the AURA. When that is not possible, the applicant must make all efforts to minimize what we call unavoidable impacts. That said, the commission must agree that what is proposed is indeed unavoidable and if it is necessary in order to complete the primary project purpose. Finally, individual commission members must decide whether they think proposed project will or will not have adverse impacts on the public interests being served by the nearby wetland resource areas. So I think that's the question we need to address before letting them know um, whether or not to move forward with this plan. Thank you very much. And we'll turn it over to the board now. Anybody questions, comments? have a lot of good insight on this project. You know, I um, the piece of property that the project is being built on is gorgeous, right? I, I um, but the reality is is that it has a it has a best use, and um, I, I do believe that the applicant has taken very strong measures to to address the concerns that have been expressed over the course of the public meetings. Um, in a perfect world, I'd like to see no more impact, but it's not a perfect world. And, and we regularly allow people to have construction activities and, and, um, and, and impact the aura in ways that I feel is consistent with what's been put forth. I don't think they're asking for anything that we haven't given before. Um, the difference is just the mass, the, the size of the project. And, and although in connection with this project, um, it's kind of too late to start the exercise, but maybe outside of this project, I don't know if MACC has any sort of benchmarking tools or um, the applicant in the last meeting introduced some numbers of, of setbacks and square footage of wetland impacts and had made a comparison to another project. I don't know if there's resources or to, to make sure that we're consistent with what's going on in the Commonwealth. Um, it's yeah. kind of a it's kind of a tough task, but I think that precedent and consistency on these large projects is exceptionally important as we look at future ones down the road. Um, like I said, my preference would be to keep the woodland the way that it is, but I, I feel that the conservation restrictions are meaningful. I have a question about conservation restrictions. Given the amount of trees that are going to be removed both in and outside of the aura, could we, as part of the conservation restriction, and we don't do a lot of these, right? I guess there's a question as to who would hold it, right? Would the town hold the conservation restriction? 
How does that? It could be held by the town, by the Conservation Commission, by the Metacomet Land Trust. Uh, those are the most common ones. Okay. Because we, the town, as far as I know, the town only holds the one, which is Wally Johnson's farm, right? Um, no, there's a couple yeah, there's more. A couple. Okay. There's more. So it's not, not a a difficult to, to set up yeah. a conservation restriction and have the, the Conservation Commission hold it as something that could Correct. be Correct. It's, it's a lot of legal work, but that, that'll be done by a lawyer. Okay. Within the conservation restriction, could we put a requirement for um, invasive removal in Absolutely. perpetuity within the... Now, a lot of that is upland area, so it doesn't fall within our jurisdiction, but Correct. given that we're entering a we're entering into a conservation restriction, mm -hmm. is it something that, that we could require? Conservation restrictions can be very ma malleable. So, you know, the strictest conservation restriction would be don't touch it for any reason whatsoever for all time. Um, and then you start getting more malleable from there. I said, well, you know, um, you're allowed to have a walking path in there. You're allowed to have a picnic area. You're allowed to go in there to even uh, log every once in a while. That's been done. Um, you, you're allowed to, uh, uh, in fact, you may even be required uh, within jurisdictional areas to keep it free and clear of invasive plants. You know, that those are the thing, kinds of things that has to be spelled out what is allowed and what is not allowed in the CR. I, I do think the applicant has, has made a, um, a really strong effort to work with the concerns of the board, and I, and I really appreciate the, the effort that's been made. I guess my position, there's still a lot of information that we don't have. I am concerned about the sound walls and animal passage and, and shading, and you know, but we don't have a sufficient details to understand what those potential impacts may be. So I guess I'm... Um, I'm, I'm offering my apprehensive consent, if that makes sense, right? I, um, with the conservation restriction, with aggressive invasive removal, I don't know how many interior planting areas there are um, that, that fall within the limited disturbance, but as you, as you take a look at parking areas and, you know, to the extent there's really no point in replacing mm -hmm remove trees because it's forested right but to the extent you could find some locations for some trees there again that falls outside of our jurisdiction so that would be kind of a good faith thing on your part we don't really have the ability to require that i don't believe but it would be nice to replace some of what's being removed with some juveniles that have the ability to to mature into something more significant yeah so jamie to to give an analogy Say if there was a planning board, you'd be willing to uh, go from master plan to uh, definitive plan at this point, right? Something like that. Yeah, I, I think that if what's been presented to us materializes and there are additional topics of conversation that come up as a result of the additional information that's mm -hmm. going to be prepared, that isn't prepared yet, um, yeah, but the bottom line is you're not a hard no, and you're willing to, to see I'm what's By no next. means a hard no. I'm appreciative of the effort that's been made on, on behalf of the applicant. It's, it's, it's a reality we have to deal with as a community, and that's how I feel. Thank you, Jamie. So my only concern is on the wetland line. And all the trees that are on the no disturbance because this is a great forest what ensures us that you don't come back wanting to cut them all down because now you say they're dangerous and they're going to fall into the parking lot and because this is a sizable wetland and the impact is really close so have we looked at the trees that are outside of where you're going to work and i think that should be at least a discussion for the final if i so may we understand sorry the impact it could yeah. potentially be in the future because of safety yep. so if i may address that as part of our tree study we looked at not only trees within the limit of disturbance but also those that had a drip line over the limit of disturbance that were 10 feet or 15 feet off um, looking at the exposed root masses things like that so that 305 number does account for trees that abut the limit of disturbance as well so i think we all would like to see if there's trees 
taken down in the initial project and maybe those are the ones that we could see replanted in that area so if there's anything outside the limit of disturbance that has to come down <coughs> so what we're suggesting is be thorough with your plan don't go back to us in the first year and go oh, gee we left these great huge trees and now everybody's scared to talk their car right. around the entire left side so just make sure you get the trees that you'd like to come down that could be a safety issue and I think those are the ones maybe two for one because they're in closer to the wetland if we're not going to require a lot because there's not a lot of area so that would be my thing that we could do as a little extra to make sure when we, we walk the site they had put <coughs> ribbons around um, they had identified and marked the trees that are part of the count and they did extend beyond the proposed limits of disturbance they had a GPS thing that showed us <laughs> so they the, what he's talking about is exactly excellent the way that, they that would be my only thought after you know good job we've reeled it back we're not replicating I agree with Jamie great effort we're getting really close so I'm not not in favor of the project thank you double negative Huh? <laughs> not, not. <laughs> not, not, yeah. Um, no, I want to thank you for taking, um, you know, what we said into consideration and, and revising the plan to make it something that is more palatable. Um, my only question is, you know, conservation restriction is final. <laughs> you know, you're going to give us land. I just want to make sure you're okay with it and you're not going to, in the end, cause an undue hardship on yourself. Um, you know, I certainly appreciate it. Um, I just want to make sure you and your clients and whomever is is on board with it, and, um, and that's all. I mean, yeah, and as we work through the detailed design now, um, if we're going to proceed with this with this development uh, scheme, we'll take a look at those items. Um, one thing we did did talk about out in the field is you know the potential for some reserve rights for plantings, uh, additional plantings within. See our areas. You know, we've included the piece now out along Lackey Dam Road. Um, we're going through the planning board process. Some of the comments we've heard um, there is just to try to screen the development as much as possible. Um, you know, so it would probably be you know evergreen type plantings. You know, closer to ground height. Um, you know, to to provide that you know at street level screening. So things like that. So I, I think that would all be part of the process of trying to identify um, you know things within um, the CR that may be amenable to both the Commission as well as you know help us with the other you know board that we're currently within so we'll take a look at that we'll make sure we're not over committing to something mm -hmm. um, we, we recognize that the goal of the the CR and making it as large as possible is to you know prevent future development um, to kind of lock in that this is the development and we're not going to add some tractor trailer parking along the west side or we're not going to um, look to expand you know maybe the employee park a lot of things like that that this would sort of be the the limit of development and that's something you know as part of the major mitigation uh, for the work within the aura that 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 we're reviewing now and, and that that we think we can make work so Okay. Um, then I'm not not opposed to it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well done. I'd like to see that it's moving in the right direction. You guys put a lot of hard work. Thank you for listening to all of us and our other couple of members that are not here tonight. Does anyone from the public or on Zoom have any comments on this? And are we think in another two weeks out or? Uh, I, long? I I think. Um, the f four weeks if there's one in four weeks you know I in order to you know be able to revise the plans have a have a new plan set um, and then have a chance you know for the peer reviewers to have, to have looked at it because it's probably going to take a couple of weeks to, to pull it all together so our next meeting is September 7th but the one following is September 21st so we're you know almost a month yeah I think that I think the September 21st okay. one would make the most sense all right, thank All right. you. Then um, I'll make a motion to continue to September 21st at 6.30. 6.30. I'll second it. Call me a motion to continue to September 21st at 6.30. Thanks. Yeah. Mike seconded in a quality vote. Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I bill vote aye. Thank you guys. for right, seeing you in a month. Time. Thank Have you. a great night. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Next up is a new public hearing. Um, 
In accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, and the Sutton Bylaw 12, Wetlands Protection, the Conservation Commission will hold a hearing to review an abbreviated notice of a resource area delineation and RAD submitted by David Lavalley, Portland, Connecticut. The hearing will be held on Wednesday, August 17, 2022, at 6.55 p.m. It's now 7.35. The project consists of an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation at 81, 81R, 77R, and 57 Purgatory Road. Do we have anyone here for this? Oh. Good, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Wayne Bellick, Land Design Collaborative. I'm here on behalf of 81 Purgatory LLC. Uh, Dave Lavalley, I believe, is joining us tonight. He's a trustee of uh, the LLC. So again, thanks uh, for having us. And uh, my regrets for you having to read all the uh, addresses. Uh, that'll win to anybody. Uh, we did receive a mass DEP number today, and we have it as 303-0972. Uh, the delineation, if you folks would like me to share a screen, I can, unless you folks would like to. Uh, I could go either way. You can share it if, if you have the capability to do it. Sure. Uh, and again, I, I do regret, I was hoping to be there tonight. Um, I had a filing in the town of Berlin at 7 o'clock. Uh, and I couldn't be in two places at one time. So I sent somebody there. I was hoping to be down in person with you folks, uh, which is my preference. So, uh, but we're here. So thanks again. I will share. Uh, this is the screen. You folks see that at all? Not yet. Okay. It might take a... Try it again. Try it again, yeah. Okay. One minute will do two multiple... Uh, uh, nope, I'm um, looking at, here we go. Oh. Here we there go. Are we looking? We got it. Thank you. So Thank name? you. So, uh, again, Wayne Bellick Land Design Collaborative. Uh, the wetland delineation uh, on the property, first of all, the property is, is located on the north side of Purgatory Road. North, as you're following my cursor, uh, here basically goes up to the uh, the upper left hand uh, side uh, of the sheet uh, and the site is located on the north side of uh, Purgatory Road and as you said Mr. Chairman it's uh, comprised of uh, a number of properties. Uh, properties uh, abutting the, the site uh, are mass uh, owned properties here, Commonwealth of Mass here and here as well as over in here and the town of Sutton owns uh, this property uh, to the northeast. Uh, there are some residential properties that uh, surround it to the south uh, and along uh, Purgatory Road, uh, which are those properties obviously not in ownership uh, of 81 Purgatory. So the limits of the property, uh, if you follow my cursor again, uh, come around like this along the dark line around up through here down back uh, toward Purgatory, does a little uh, hook in there, comes down up through here and envelops a, a property uh, in here, continues back to the point of, uh, of beginning. The site contains, I think it's about 78 acres. Uh, of that 78 acres, uh, about 7,400 uh, linear feet uh, were delineated by Ecotech. Uh, and uh, I understand they're not, unable to be here tonight. So Dave LaValle, uh, interesting with the, the LaValle uh, brothers, as you folks, uh, uh, I don't know if all of you remember back in the day, LaValle brothers uh, was a, uh, an engineering firm in central Massachusetts, a well-respected, reputable firm. Uh, and Dave LaValle, uh, uh, who again is joining us tonight um, in the applicant, uh, grew up at 57 uh, Purgatory Road, which is in this area of the site here. His dad was one of the LaValle brothers and his uncle was as well. Um, and so Dave and his, his uh, cousin Chad had followed their footsteps. Dave is a, uh, a wetland scientist as well as a uh, certified uh, planner uh, and he works in the, in the great state of Connecticut. Uh, so that's basically a little bit about uh, the Val LaValle brothers. Like I said, Dave had grown up at 57 uh, um, Purgatory Road. Uh, we have done, uh, and, and I can show you the topographic sheets, we have those, but for the purposes of uh, the presentation, uh, what I was hoping to do is uh, discuss uh, the, um, 
the briefly discuss the wetlands series and the numbering. I know that Brandon is familiar with uh, uh, with the site, as my understanding from uh, from Dave. Uh, so basically, the site is broken up into a number of wetland systems. There's an area in here, out along the, the back here, and a main system that comes right up the gut uh, through here, and another system uh, down toward the southern uh, portion of the site. Uh, this main system uh, up through here is labeled uh, the A series of, of wetland flags. Uh, along here, uh, actually along here are the AB series, a small series of wetlands. And again, obviously all that goes off site. This series in here uh, is the, uh, the BA series right up the northerly side of this system here. Uh, it's a BVW again uh, to a, uh, an intermittent stream. And the CA series runs along this route here out uh, and then off the property. Uh, the other series of flags are the uh, the B series and the C series, the BB series, which are these in here and the CCs series in here. So I could go, Mr. Chairman, to the, the maps and I apologize because of the scale and the wetland flags uh, there were a number of wetland flags out here, so we had to present this on a number of sheets. Uh, so I can go to the uh, to the individual sheets. The long and short is we have 57 purgatory here with 57 narrow back. 57 is developed single family house lot. Uh, 81 purgatory is in here, again developed as a single uh, family purga uh, uh, house lot uh, with 81 R uh, to the rear. Uh, and then 77 Purgatory, same thing, uh, developed as a single family house lot uh, with 77 uh, to the rear. Again, all the properties are now in the ownership of uh, 81 Purgatory LLC. Uh, I can venture on to uh, the plan. So again, as I just described, this is 57 Purgatory uh, with the limits of the property uh, doing this. Uh, single family house lot in the development no wetlands uh, shown on this sheet. Uh, this is where we start to get into uh, the meat of it, uh, where uh, we have 77 purgatory located here, 81 purgatory located here. Uh, there is a, uh, an access drive serving this house that comes up through here and it actually continues. It's an old, it was old, uh, an old farm back in the day. Uh, and so a lot of the old car paths still exist on the property. Uh, and it goes out, uh, branches off to a garage here, and then continues uh, to the northeast of the site. So as I said, there is a BBW located uh, in this area here, and this would be the, uh, the uh, AB series, and that comes up uh, through here, through the BB series, and then the CB series uh, runs through here. Uh, I understand that, um, I know Dave LaValle knows the site very well, uh, and I understand that uh, Brandon has been out there uh, also. This is uh, land on, on the site where there aren't really any uh, resource areas with the exception of this corner uh, up in here. Uh, this is uh, the AB series, and again, 57 purgatory is at the bottom of the screen. So this would be 57R uh, located on this portion of the site. So we'll continue to the next sheet. Uh, this is out behind the earlier sheet where I showed you uh, 77 purgatory and 81 purgatory uh, with the uh, uh, the BB and CB series of, of wetlands. This is going further to the northeast. So this is the cart road that I was talking about uh, that comes up through the site and continues. Uh, there's a uh, BBW that comes through here uh, with an intermittent stream. Uh, that makes its way uh, through the site. And again, this was the, uh, the BA uh, series and the CA series of, of wetlands. Um, that does continue offsite again uh, through here, again, onto Commonwealth of, of Massland. Uh, and again, the uh, AA series uh, over in here, uh, north of Commonwealth of Mass, and this is the town of Sutton in here. Uh, that previous sheet that I was on, uh, again, covers the beginning of the AA series up in here with Commonwealth of, of Mass, the most, most northerly portion of the site. 
Now the site topographically, and I should have mentioned this earlier, um, the site topographically uh, is high in this area here, pitches generally to this direction here, down to this uh, resource area in here, uh, and then continues to pitch uh, to the, this uh, wetland system, which flows uh, to the, I guess it would be to the, generally to the east, uh, as well as uh, this area in here being higher than this uh, BBW in here. Uh, and then we have a high spot in here and another high spot out in, out in here. Truth be told, um, I've been in the business for about 40 years. I've come before you guys on a couple projects uh, way back when. Um, I am not a wetland uh, specialist, and so if there are any questions uh, specific to the resource areas, I would look to defer to Dave uh, Lavalley. Uh, and as I said, I know Brandon's been out there. So uh, regretfully, I am not a, a wetland consultant, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the commission, so I would respectfully look to defer to those folks for specifics on the types of uh, vegetation uh, and the like uh, on site. I know the methodology used was consistent with uh, mass DEP requirements, and you folks know, I mean, uh, Ecotech's work is as good as gold, uh, so I know you're familiar with their work, uh, and Art Allen is the one uh, that I think Scott Morrison was also involved in. Uh, the delineation uh, of the resource area. So with that, uh, I'd like to uh, ask if you folks have any questions and if I can answer them, I certainly will. Uh, if I can't, uh, again, if it's very specific to uh, the resource areas, I would look to defer to Dave and to Brandon. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll turn this over to Greg. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So at this point, <coughs> It's a very large property, a lot of wetlands to review. I have not completed a review on our side um, to date. I have been on the property, I have walked around, I have searched for undelineated resource areas, which I found none. Um, but as far as the actual line review and um, that part of it, the more tedious part of it, I have not been able to finish that up yet. Um, so I will have a report back in a couple weeks, um, and I may be reaching out to the representatives to meet me on site before the next meeting just to ask some questions and uh, look at a few different areas. But as I said today, I don't have a uh, full report for the commission. And, and we appreciate the commission's patience. There's 7,400 linear feet of wetland line. That's over a mile. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it's it's quite a bit of line, so and it's a large piece of property, so we appreciate your patience. Would two weeks be enough? Mm, doubtful, but um, what I recommend is that um, if Wanda could put this in towards the end of the night and with the five-minute increments, you probably wouldn't have to wait five minutes. You, know, you could just pass right by it with a continuance pretty easily if you put it towards the end of the meeting. Okay. Does anyone from the public or Zoom or anyone else from the board have any comments before we continue this out for further review? Hi, this is Dave LaValle, applicant owner. Um, again, just thank you for your time. I can be available whenever to meet uh, Greg and Brandon up there. Perfect. Thank you, Dave. Just out of curiosity, mean, what's the end result? What are we delineating all the wetlands? There's not a lot of, I mean, it's an ANRAD, so. Um, Is it for a subdivision, road? At, at this point, uh, through the chair, it's really none of our business. It's just straight out confirming the wetland boundary, and when they come in with something, we'll know then. Perfect. Good enough. Everyone okay to continue this for two weeks? I'll make a motion to continue to September 7th at? Uh, 640. 640. I'll second it. Hall made a motion to continue to September 7th at 6.40. Mike seconded. Nicole, do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I, Bill, vote aye. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you very much for the overview. Thank you. Next up are the minutes of August 3rd, 22. Thank you, folks. Much appreciated. Thank you. Have a good night. Review the minutes of August 3rd. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from August 3rd. 
I'll second it. Paul made a motion to approve the minutes of August 3rd, 22. Mike second and Nicole, do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. And I bill vote aye. Next up is discussion that Mike's going to recuse on for 224 Manchog Road. Greg, how are we moving along with that? It's, it's been me doing the lead on that one. Brandon, how are we going to move along with that? I, you know, good question. Um, I'm glad it's on the agenda because it, it reminds me to, to check up with uh, Ms. Bridnell. I'm sorry, Ms. She changed her name. Koza. Kazachka, maybe? It, 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 something like that? Something like that. Okay. Jessica. Um, see where she's at um, because we do have a, a uh, hearing with a magistrate coming up in about a month. Um, so I gotta get on that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, site visits for 10 Sovereign Heights. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I believe we're still waiting for a letter of veracity from the engineer. Um, Unless you have, I think we have it. Unless you have it, Wanda. We have it. Okay. Can I just read it to you? So if I remember right, Craig, you said the site looks good, but you were waiting for this letter. Yep. Um, on my site review, it looked like it was um, constructed to the plan. All the grass had grown in over 75%, well over 75%. Everywhere was stabilized. And now we have a letter from Oak Hill Engineering um, that certifies the project has been completed in compliance with the order conditions. So uh, we recommend uh, COC. Complete. Please, I'll make a motion to issue a complete certificate of compliance for 10 Sovereign Heights. I'll second it. Nicole made a motion to issue a COC for 10 Sovereign Heights. Mike seconded. Nicole, do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Jamie, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Bill, vote aye. Next up, 38 Horn Drive. That's you. Come on down, please. Just state your name and address for the record. Picard. Oh. One is Ian Picard, 38 Horn Drive. Sorry I missed the other meetings. I was doing cancer fundraising. I was hosting, so sorry about that. No problem, um, thank you for being here. And just here to answer any questions. Um, is this the one that we got some stuff in? Refresh yeah. my memory, please. So, we got some stuff in on this one and we had some concerns. Yeah, that's real. Um, concerns mostly lie with was the drywall well installed, was the level spreader installed, uh, and I'll actually go to the as built to, uh, uh, I guess I should go to the original plan. Sorry, one second. So, um, I think our biggest concerns, or the commission's biggest concerns, I should say, uh, were whether or not this Coltec unit was installed and whether or not this level spreader was installed. There also seemed to be a, um, a stairway that wrapped, or not a stairway, but a walkway that wrapped around the house and led this way. We received some pictures. Oh, sorry. Well, it wasn't just pictures. It was Isn't a there a drain in the driveway that wasn't on the plan? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so, so the oh, chair, uh, the Preet Engineering uh, submitted a, a, a two-page explanation um, that addresses everything that the commission was asked for. Specifically, Mike had a lot of questions about this at the, the last meeting. This was discussed. The engineer goes goes through uh, six points uh, of questions that, and he answers them. So I'll, I'll, I'll hand it back to Greg. Um, as far as the dry well. This is some pictures of the process of installing it, and this is what it currently looks like now. That's the uh, Coltec unit. The level spreader, it appears is underground. Um, no pictures from it being installed, but this, I guess this kind of line right here is what they're claiming, and you can kind of see um, how it goes flat across the, the uh, yard right here. So that speaks to the Coltec and the level spreader. Um, this addresses the plantings that were completed in conformance per the letter we received, and then just some more pictures of the site. Additional plantings. All right, why don't you go over that, that drain, the trench drain, which is number so four. So here's that drain we're concerned right, so we're, about. So from the letter, 
A trench drain was added at the end of the driveway away from the garage. The trench drain catches stormwater from the common driveway. It is intended to slow down the stormwater runoff oh, run from the common driveway onto the new paper driveway. The outlet from the trench drain discharges towards the driveway still in trench. Um, so that was their explanation for completing. Where does it discharge? That was a concern. Uh, towards the Can driveway. We go back to the site trench. plan? Yeah. So the driveway still in trench. Is it on the asphalt? Let's see. If I may. Yeah. Oh, if you hold up that last one. Yep. That line to the left of your cursor, right there is where the trench drain is for right the here. driveway, separating the common driveway from our driveway. And it discharges in the crushed stone but on the upper level of the crush zone, so it doesn't damage the integrity of the actual filtration system. So, it but, so because there is such a grade from the upper driveways, there's like five houses above me and all their water <laughs> comes to my house. So to slow down the speed, it was recommended to catch some of it there to discharge it on the upper end. Otherwise, all of it's trying to get down to the lower end of the filtration system and work its way back up, if you follow what I'm saying. So yeah, so just- um, That was just paved too. So, so the, the trench drain comes through here, discharges into this drain. Yes. Comes all the way down, and then this discharges just into- No, that doesn't discharge, that's a- Oh, uh, it's just an infiltration unit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, the whole thing's an infiltration system with a, crushed stone, a dressing coat over the top just so we can clean it if it catches silt and stuff. Because, like I said, there's five houses above me, and everybody likes to send their water. I'm the lowest person. you got to send it back. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> so that's why that ended up being added in, because the, the fear was that it was with all that asphalt, because they paved up above us, which wasn't the case before, we were just going to get a lot of runoff. And we, we, I wanted to stop it before it tried to you know, overtake my infiltration drain and go down the hill. Because... That, you know, lever, the level spreader's in there, but it, I really didn't want water getting even to that point. You know, that, that's a real heavy rain to be able to get there. Um, and I guess the last point or thing I'll talk about here was we were, or the commission was concerned about the deck wrapping around to that um, page north side of the house and towards the driveway. Dupree has a letter here that says, due to family, Needs a modification was made to the deck construction to allow for accessible access, accessible access from the driveway to the deck. This modification included an access, accessible ramp and access along the side and back of the garage to the deck. This modification also included the stairs to the backyard being adjusted to work with the ramp access. The permit for the modified deck was pulled during the time of COVID shutdowns, and this modification to the deck was coordinated with the coordinated with the building official, um, and that go on to say a building permit was uh, approved or issued. And so then there was the work on the breakwater too, right? The riprap on the, there was work done to the, on the, the seawall? No. I don't no. Know. There was no, no work done. No work done on the seawall. No. That addresses all my kids. I just, you added a drain. We didn't know where it discharged. We couldn't verify any of the gutter drains where they went, so. And through the chair, they did just repave I, Warren that, Drive yeah. last summer, and it's, I mean, I can imagine the water flows. Is, your, oh, is, it, is it working <laughs> now? I mean, uh, it's yes, been dry, but. I mean, it's been dry, but, like, this is mature. We didn't, um, you know, we want to make sure everything was stable before we came in and stuff. And, like, with the heavy, heavy rains we had last year, mm -hmm. we didn't have discharge. So I was very happy, Good. you know, that even with the level spreader, like, it's hard to tell. I was like trying to figure out how to do pictures and you know stuff. That's why we did it from the lake because there was questions about taking pictures from the lake because then you could see it's getting mowed off because you know landscapers come in and what I mean is the grass, so you can see that's why it's cut up. But yeah, we're 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 really happy that our water's captured and not getting to the lower level of the yard or to the lake. Perfect. Job well done. And Did the trench drains, the proposed trench drains in front of the garage doors and the those drain where? Do those go into the Coltec unit or do they? Yeah. 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 We tried. The goal was to capture all water 
anything we were able to catch, capture it and you know have it mitigate versus making a run for the lake basically. All right. Anybody else? I don't have anything else. Um, I'll make a motion to issue a complete certificate of compliance for 38 Horn Drive. I'll second it. Cole made a motion to issue a complete certificate for 38 Horn. Mike seconded and called a vote. Aye. Mike had a vote. Aye. Jamie had a vote. Aye. And I bill vote aye. Thank you very much for coming and thanks, thanks for Jack. hanging out for the Great. entire meeting. Thank you. It's nice to learn. <laughs> so, take care. 382 West Sutton Road, Steve LaFleur. I believe we did this one either at the last meeting or the meeting before. No, months. We were just waiting for a letter. I know. We uh, got it. The, the plan, I think he just had, yeah, yeah. or we, whatever it was, that's all. And then we just never heard from him in a while. Yeah, we got it all. It might have been the one you weren't here. We got the plan and the... And, uh, now it's starting to make sense because we weren't sure why it was back on the, the agenda, but I guess it came in when we were on vacation? Yep. I think oh, we asked have it. for... Because he wanted to mow everything and go to the lines and... As long as he did what we asked, I'm good with it. I think we were good, other than it's him already, just We already the made video. a issue, made a motion to issue a complete certificate that could fly on it. All right, so well, now, yeah, yeah. Now, now we can get that out then. Yeah, it, it, just, it was just saying she put it back on the agenda. Probably because I, I was asking about it. Okay. <laughs> and I'm wondering if maybe we didn't sign off on it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you need to sign something. Did you sign? Do you remember signing anything for it? I think Wanda's going to get a file, so she might have an answer for us in a second. Well, let's uh, table that for a second. Um, 11 Tucker Lane, unex unexpected business. Yes, uh, Mr. Zicolella has been sending uh, Wanda and I pictures of uh, the work that he's been doing to restore the backyard. And the looks, pictures look decent. Um, we just have to get back there and do a physical inspection. Um, he will need to still do some plannings. Um, he doesn't seem to be that far along, but it's a little too dry to be planning anything at the moment anyway, so I think that he's still uh, uh, chug along, chugging along uh, pretty well, and uh, either Greg or I will be doing a, a site inspection in the next couple of weeks, and we'll report back to you. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Wanda, was 382 West Sutton signed off on? Yes, it was. We okay. were waiting for whatever the So we're good on that. Okay. Is there anything else, any department forms or any other unexpected business? Not that I know of. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Cole made a motion to adjourn. Mike seconded to call a vote. Aye. Mike got a vote. Aye. Jamie had a vote. Aye. Mike got a vote. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.